Elvis Perkins, Ash Wednesday, of course. Um, sharing three verses right off the bat. Let's continue. Let's generate some appropriate um, mourning. Lent is a season of mourning, so we celebrate before we mourn. And there is a time for all things. Um, and I think a lot of us turn from mourning, and then it can be a lot harder when seasons of mourning arrive. Um, but let us always be in a state of mourning for the brokenness of the world, because the world is broken. Christ died that he might deliver us from the brokenness of the world. What a sad thing, in a way, that we would be so broken as to require such a sacrifice. And indeed, let us uh, rejoice that light is to be found. But let us also be very conscious of how desperate uh, a world we live in, how desperate and sad. Genesis 3.19 Remember that thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. Mark 1, 15. Turn away from sin, and be faithful to the gospel. Mark 1, 15. Repent, and hear the good news. Um, ashes and, and Ash Wednesday, they, you know, it's, it's a... It's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's a sacramental ritual. Um which are helpful to move through and to remember that we come from nothing and to nothing we shall return and though we are nothing we have such possibility to be vessels of God's light in this world um, to, to find life eternal even in a world that is built and uh, constructed upon sin and death um, and ashes came from also a uh, ritual of mourning that you would throw ashes on yourself and uh, sackcloth and ashes you might have commonly heard actually quite liberally used throughout literature and uh, poetry um, I wanted to use throw some mentions at it so then uh, it would be interesting uh, Job 5 uh, and 6 I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear but now my eye seeth thee the other eye wandereth of its own accord. Wherever I abhor myself, wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. Brokenness. Like uh, Leonard Cohen says, and I've quoted before, the cracks are how the light gets in. Your brokenness, your mourning, is where God will find you in celebration and in an reparation in repairing he's fixated he has a fixation on your reparation Jeremiah 626 O daughter of my people gird on sackcloth roll in the ashes Daniel 9 3 I turn to the Lord God pleading an earnest prayer with fasting sackcloth and ashes cling not to this world let this world not be a fetter cling not to the pleasures of this world you know what, all uh, spiritual, philosophical thought and wisdom suggests the same. I often look at one of the, a few of the pinnacles, the pillars of like um, human uh, temporal wisdom uh, in uh, Solomon and, and Buddha, and both of them pointed rather uh, pointedly that all of this is nothing, that this is all vanity, this is all ashes. But in that we live for he who is eternal, for that which is eternal. It's nothing. It's nothing but ashes. Let us be in mourning for a world that ignores that. And I don't, I know if you knew this, because I didn't know this, but uh, Ash Wednesday is also, this is a Passover celebration. Uh, as in Passover was uh, to remembering uh, the angel of, of death passing over all the houses 
uh, in which sacrificial blood was painted on the lintels of the door frame, just like Christ paints our souls in his blood that we might be passed over for death. Uh, likewise, in Ezekiel, he was led into a vision and uh, the Lord said to him in Ezekiel 9.4 that he wrote down, because he was like, this is amazing. Go through the midst of the city, he commanded these warriors there, through all the midst of Jerusalem, and put the mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over the abominations that are done within it. And everybody who did not have this mark was to be slain. Those who cling to the temporal, those who live for this now, as opposed to the eternal now, will die with this now. Or rather, they will live with that death. And those who choose eternal life will live with that life. It's as simple as light and darkness, and we complexify it in a, a billion different dragonfly eye ways. But let the highways be the highways of our thinking. Uh, two other references I just thought were really neat uh, in Maccabees. First uh, Maccabees 347. Uh, that day they fasted and wore sackcloth. They sprinkled ashes on their heads and tore their clothes. Again, signs of deep felt mourning. Of sorrow and empathy. And then that was all preparation for battle. So indeed, our separation from this earth is all also preparation for battle. Those who uh, find appeal in the warrior mentality and that God is literally girding us and these are these are this is the application of woad before we make our Pictish raid against the invading uh, Rome Romans the Roman hordes uh, it also had some uh, similarities especially the Psalm 51 uh, that I read earlier with uh, an Egyptian opening the mouth ceremony a ritual where the dead were fed and watered um, and given water to continue to live on into the into the afterlife which I thought was kind of interesting um, that even then they understood that in that they understood that uh, bread you know that bread and water were required eternally and that's what Christ again came to do was to be Jesus came to be the bread of life and the water of life throughout eternity, not for just the nowness, because we can eat, drink, and be merry, and to, but tomorrow we die. So I take up the season of mourning, of joyful mourning, of mourning for the morning that may soon come, and I don't know when it comes. But I pray that you will greet with me that morning with joy, rather than fear and trembling. So let us set our hearts to it now. Let us repair the world as best we can and let us surrender ourselves that we would engage with no war against a righteous and holy God. I have no desire to do battle with God. Mostly because I don't want to lose. As I have lost already, I am bereft already, I am ashes already. Peace be unto you. Amen. Selah. Mm, 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 mm